hour, ladies and gentlemen, please be prepared to be entertained and enthralled with some knockout tactics that you won't learn in business school. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together, please, for Mr. Simon Hazeldean. Well, good morning. I have to say to Mark, thank you for that introduction. After that, I really can't wait to hear what I'm going to say. So, let's, uh, let's just do a little check-in on how you're doing. I'm going to ask you a series of three questions, and to each question I need an enthusiastic response. Now, let me just define an enthusiastic response. Hand in the air and you shout out, yes, please. Is that okay? Yes, Fantastic. That actually wasn't the first question. Uh, a, a tad premature there, sir. Probably no real change. Now, first question. Who would like to be a more powerful and confident negotiator? Yes, please. Who wants to make more money next year than they did this year? Yes, please. And who wants to walk out of that door ten times more sexually attractive than when they walked in? Yes, please. Guys, you should have put your hands up. That's all I'm saying. Better feedback for you. So we're going to look at negotiation specifically. We are going to also touch on, touch on selling to some degree as well. Now, word of warning. Show of hands, please. Who's got kids? Fantastic. Uh, who used to be a kid? You should be just checking you're still with me. Do not, under any circumstances, use any of the tactics that I am going to tell you about when you are bringing up your children. Children learn from the behaviour of their parents and they will start to copy you. I have a 15-year-old with hormones who can negotiate. That is not a good situation to be in. I will talk to you later about using conditional proposals, if you, then I. And just imagine, Tom, it's time for bed. Dad, if you let me watch the end of this film, then I will go to bed quickly and quietly. And I'm going, Thomas, I do this stuff for a living. Stop it. So, <laughs> pay attention. Now then, is business tough? Yeah. Is it tough out there? Yeah. All double-dip recession. Times are tough. It's all going on like that. You know what? That's the way it's going to be forever. Okay? That's the way it's going to be forever. If you're waiting for the sunshine to come back, it isn't going to come back. It's tough out there, isn't it? Yeah? It feels sometimes a bit unfair, doesn't it? Mark mentioned Bill Gates. Here's a quote from Bill Gates. Life isn't fair, get used to it. Okay, life isn't fair, get used to it. I used, I've said that to my son, bringing him up for years. You know what kids do? They go, that's not fair. I say, Tom, life isn't fair, get used to it. Now, is that a cruel thing for a father to say to his son, or am I just telling him the truth? I'm just telling him the truth, aren't I? I said to him one time, tell me, buddy, what's good about life not being fair? And he thought for a moment, and he said, I could get more than someone else. Got it in one. Now, what I'm going to share with you is how you can get more of what you want, and maybe your customers don't get quite as much as they want. Because we're going to talk about the art of negotiation, which is basically about putting more money on your bottom line. Now, are your products and services good? I know we've got people selling forklifts, we've got people with software, we've got various industries. Is, is your products and services good? Yes. You're proud of them? Yes. You think they're really useful? Yes. So you deserve to do well? Yes. It's not about deserve. It's not about deservability at all, isn't it? It's actually about this. In business, you don't get what you deserve, you get what you negotiate. Chester Carras said that, an American negotiation writer. In business, you don't get what you deserve, you get what you negotiate. Do you buy that? So it would be worth spending an hour looking at what negotiation, how, negotiation is and how to get better at it. Right, let's have a look at what we're going to be looking at specifically. This is what I call the winner's triangle. Mark mentioned my, my interest in performance psychology. This is the success triangle, if you like, the winner's triangle. Winning and succeeding at anything is a combination of attitude, skills and knowledge. Now, out of 100%, how much of your success as a sales professional is down to attitude? Shout out, please. Give me a, give me a figure. 80. 80. Yeah, most people say that. 80, 90%. I said that the first time I was shown this. I was shown this by a guy when I was doing my research from the Special Forces. He was one of the people in the Iranian Embassy Assault Team, and he taught me through this, what the SAS called the will to win. And I said, probably 80%. He said, no. He said, no. 50%. What did Sean say earlier? What did you get if you motivate an idiot? 
You get a motivated idiot, don't you? Sometimes you get a highly motivated underachiever. Well, that's what I call them, highly motivated underachiever. Motivation, fantastic. Positivity, fantastic. But they lack the skills and the knowledge. And I think it's more like 30% skills and then 20% knowledge. Knowledge of your products and services and knowledge of the customer's business. Attitude still, yes, important, but without the other two is just not enough. And by the way, I'm in the Professional Speaking Association. They have declared a fatwa on me because I'm the only speaker on the circuit going around telling people attitude is not as important as they thought it was. <laughs> That's the kind of... It's amazing, isn't it? Sean, Sean and I get the same thing. Uh, we need a motivational speaker. And my next-door neighbour, Tony, runs a painting and decorating business. Tony does a proper day's work. He's quite bemused at what I do for a living. So he said to me last week, he said, are you... Uh, you're going off to do one of your motivational talks then, Simon? I said, yeah, I am. Yeah. He says, are you, going to, are you going to get them motivated? I said, well, Tony, I'm kind of figuring they're motivated or they wouldn't have turned up in the first place. Would that apply to you guys as well? I'm guessing it would, wouldn't it? Do you know the people who really need this stuff? They're not here. Yeah, they're not here. You're giving up a daily time. You understand. So we're going to look at the skills of negotiation. Now then. Here's what I see when I'm working and consulting with clients around the area of negotiation. There's very, very little planning and preparing takes place. Very little planning and preparing takes place. Then they do a fair bit of selling, and then the buyer drags them really quickly into negotiation, and they do a whole ton of negotiation. Does that seem horribly familiar to any of you? Yeah? What's your planning and preparing like for a sale and negotiation? Fantastic, I've arrived five minutes early, I'll just have a quick think. Something like that? No, of course not, I'm a room full of sales professionals, we've never done that, have we? Hmm, maybe, maybe. 80 to 90% of your success as a negotiator is down to the planning and preparation that you do. 80 to 90% of your success as a negotiator is down to the planning and preparing that you do. We're going to take a look at some of those key things. Imagine if this was made out of, say, children's building blocks. That would be a very unstable structure, wouldn't it? From a profit point of view, that's a very unstable structure. Buyers, oh, and by the way, I'm, I'm, I don't know whether to say this or not. I suppose I'm going to have to, at the risk of really becoming very unpopular, I spend 50% of my time training salespeople to negotiate. I spend 50% of my time training buyers to negotiate. Do you want to hiss now? <laughs> they want to drag you from here into here as fast as possible because that's their comfort zone and they know it's probably not your comfort zone and they don't want to let you do this for the reason Sean was talking about, about communicating value. They don't want to allow you to do that. So they want to drag you as fast as possible into the price negotiation. So where we need to be is a firm foundation of planning and preparing, plenty of good selling. And Sean was talking to you about the importance of questions and gathering information, vital in selling, vital in negotiation as well. So good planning and preparing, good selling, good negotiating. One of my best friends, Richard, used to be the Vice President of Procurement for a very large company. He's now doing a slightly different role with them. His wife, Jo, is also a professional buyer in the electronics industry. I asked them one time when we were having dinner together, what's the single biggest failing of professional buyers? They both said, we don't plan and prepare enough. We're rushing from one supplier meeting to the next. We're often running down the corridor, trying to get our notes together so that then we can walk in to get the salesperson from the foyer looking very confident and collected. So they aren't planning and preparing either. So that's where you can tip the advantage in your favour. So what I